joined by Temba Garimbo. Temba, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and interviewing me. So your background, obviously, is you've, you've moved to South Africa from Zimbabwe. Uh, just give us a bit of background on life in Zimbabwe and how the move happened from there to South Africa. Um, I grew up in Zimbabwe in a small town called Mashingo. It's like uh, 300 kilometers away from the border, the Zimbabwe-South Africa border. Um, I grew up, my, me and my young brother, and my parents passed away when I was very young, at young age. Uh, my, parents, my mother passed away when I was nine, my father when I was 13. So I had to look my, after myself from back then. And um, I've tried many things uh, in my life, like from 16 years old, I, I started doing um, diamonds, and I was smuggling diamonds in the Chiazo fields. And, uh, but it was not something that was very good, you know. So I had to decide to leave it. I, I left it because I almost get killed, killed there. And I moved to South Africa when I was 17. And first time I came here was a border jumper. I didn't have a passport or anything. And I lived on the streets in Johannesburg for like two weeks maximum. Um, because I was waiting for my cousins in Cape Town to send me money to, so that I can continue my journey. Yeah. And that time in Zimbabwe, obviously, when, when you were taking care of yourself, it must have been, it must have been quite a, a difficult experience, and, but it must have taught you quite a few lessons, I'm sure, as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like, it taught me big lessons about life, you know, not to depend on anything and not, to know that life is unpredictable. When my parents passed away, you know, things were so good, but then when they passed away, things started turning around, you know. So uh, it gave me that, that mental age that, that I know life is unpredictable and never depend on anyone, you know. Um, you have to go out there and look after yourself. Uh, and the world, the world is, not, is not evolving around you. You have to always work hard for your, what you want in life. And it gave me that mental advantage, I think, over, over the years that I know that I can overcome any challenge if I put my mind to it. Yes. And then, as the story went, you arrived in, in South Africa, you you lived on the streets for a while, your cousins then sent you money. How did that journey evolve into getting into the sports and getting into MMA? Uh, funny enough, you know, um, when, I, when, I, when I got to Cape Town, my, I was working as a gardener at a landscape company, and I saw one of the posters uh, about an about, uh, event, MMA event that was happening in Parklands, and I had watched a movie called Never Back Down, then I said, oh, actually, this is a sport. Actually, I can do it. Then I contacted the guys, and I went to Gracie. Then um, I started training at Gracie. And then Gracie and Panther were like affiliated, so I went to Panther as well and trained there. I started with Jiu-Jitsu, basically. So like I, my, the coach, James, he actually said to me, no, you're actually very, very natural with this. You can actually do this professionally. Then uh, three months later, uh, with my coach also, Anthony, and Don Keto from Cape Town, Panthers. Um, he, they all said, no, actually, I'm very good. I, I could fight. So they organized me a fight uh, three months later. Then I fought my first amateur fight, and I won the fight in seven seconds. Uh, TKO, a knockout, basically. Um, and that's where it, everything started. And then the move from Cape Town to Johannesburg. Obviously, you moved from Cape Town, came here, started at FFM. How did that journey happen? Ah, uh, yeah, they kept on to Johannesburg, back here. It was a move, uh, I think it was more inspired by the people that were fighting out of FFM. And also it was a move around my career, you know, like I had to be smart about my career and I had to make good decisions. Because the back in Cape Town, I, I, was, I, was, I was good. I was becoming like a Cape Town Stabo, you know, in UFC. I was winning fights, getting fight of the night, every day, like I was undefeated. But um, there was one thing that was lacking, you know, I was getting the good training in terms of like pad holding and conditioning and stuff like that, but my skill was not evolving and I didn't have training partners anymore, you know. Uh, like I was basically like maybe the top guy in, in, in the gym. And um, so I decided also that I actually won my career. It was either I moved to Johannesburg or to go overseas. I talked to my coach. I said to him, "Can you get me to overseas?" Because I, I, I was always a big dreamer, you know. So I thought um, I either go to Johannesburg or I will have to move overseas and try and live maybe in America or something. If I had to live on the streets, I would. 
and try to get my career better in there. So they, it was either between those two things. And um, I came here once for a fight. I think I fought on that day, that night, I fought Charles Vesserman. Um, I think I won fight of the night and submission of the night on the same day, on this, with the same fight. And um, what happened, I met Demat Pena, I'm a business partner now. Uh, we, we've been friends also, like we've been talking on WhatsApp and Instagram and uh, Twitter and all that stuff. Like I, I was always inspired by him, you know, because he come from a similar background as me. And we've been talking to you, talking about, uh, I would like to move and train with you and all that stuff like that. And um, he, we met at the event and he said to me, no, you must come here and you must train here, you know. And um, he was very friendly to me. Like we've been talking on WhatsApp and saying on the phone and stuff like that. But when we met in, in real life, like we, we just became friends straight away. And uh, I went back to Cape Town after the fight. Then I, I think two weeks later, I moved here to Johannesburg. And also I always wanted to move here regardless of the situation. Like I told you, it was either here or to go overseas. So I, I decided to move here because I was also inspired by not only Demart, it was Demart, Gareth McKellen. Yeah, he was one of, and Costa Yano, they were the guys that I was actually in EFC that I was looking up to, you know. Some of them were in my, in my division, like let's say Costa, and um, Costa Yano was in my division. I wouldn't really want to look up to someone that is in my division, but it was someone that was inspiring, you know. So I was, I had to move, and then I made the move to FFM, and Richie was a good coach as well. But my main move was, I uh, was inspired by the guys that were training out of FFM, that's Demart, Gareth, and Costa. And then obviously that relationship between yourself and Demart has, has grown exponentially to the point where the two of you now have a business of your own. Tell us how, how that evolved and, and how the opening of the gym happened. Um, what happened is um, when, we, when I got here to Johannesburg, I lived in the gym basically. Uh, Demart has also lived in the gym and he has worked his way up to where he is today to become the chairman that he is, to become the person that he is, the family man that he is. And also, I think I've also done the same, quite the same, you know, like I lived in the gym, I've become a better person, I've become, I think, um, I've become a better athlete. I worked my way up, I didn't just, nothing was handed to me, like similar to Demart, you know, we both hard workers, we both want better life, we, we both are like similar minded, in, not, if not so, like we, we have similar goals, you know. So we have been talking about this for many years, and uh, uh, I've saved money, you saved money, and over the years we saved money towards something, you know. Uh, we've talked about this, I think, two years ago. We wanted to do it, but we didn't have enough capital and we didn't have a venue to do it. And uh, with time, you know, we just saved, I think I saved money from my uh, last three fights, sponsorship wise, sponsorship from Zimbabwe and here. Um, you know, with time and with the clients that we do as well, we save money over the years. And eventually, we came here to Rocco Mamas, myself and Demat, and um, we found that spot over there, it was open. Then um, we called the landlord, and the landlord told us that this one was also open. Then this one was the perfect opportunity for us to get into Kalami and introduce our type of training to the general public. And we, like with the view that you see here, it's, it's a good idea, a place to have a business. I think everyone would want to have a business here, and, uh, and similar to what we're doing. So that's, that's, how, we, that's how we grew up, uh, like myself and Demar, that's how we got here. We saved ourselves here and uh, we saved our money here. And, we worked hard to get this place uh, done. And um, here we are now. We, it's one of our dreams. It's just came true. And now the, the main goal is to keep it running and keep it going and manage it properly and make sure that the doors keep open. And for those that want to get in contact with you guys and come through and train, where can they find you? Uh, for anyone that want to come and train with us here, you can contact myself on Demat, uh, and Demat on Instagram or contact us on our cell phone numbers. My cell phone number is 0714566733. Um, or you can just pop in here, Kailami on Main Shopping Center, you won't miss it. Uh, just look for the Ultimate MMA Fitness Gym and yeah, we are open to the general public, to everyone that wants to train and get fit the fighters way. So. 
you come in and you have your free tryout sessions and see if something that you like to do before you think about signing up. And we are welcome to everybody. Well, guys, there you have it from Tema Garimbo himself. A true story of triumph over adversity. You know, a man that's come from humble beginnings, never wanted for anything and worked his way to the top, now owning his own business. Thank you. So uh, come down anytime you want. He will be here, Demartis here. Get in the gym, speak to the man, and get in for a few sessions. Thanks, Timber. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Jason, for coming and interviewing us. Thank you. Thank you.